Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing what I'm going to term a gentle shadow work reading. So sometimes when we go into shadow work readings they're pretty intense, they can be pretty hard for people to kind of sit in the energy of but today it just feels a little bit softer, a little bit more gentle, a little bit more tender. So we're still doing a shadow work reading but I wanted to bring in a more gentle sort of softer approach to the energy. That's the intention anyway. How it unfolds is up to the energy. So let's get our first. We're going to get three of these cards. Three beautiful opening energies here. What do we need to see to support our shadow work journey? Understanding as well with shadow work. And we always say this in every shadow work reading is not every reading is for everybody, specifically shadow work readings. Please only do this reading if you know you're ready and prepared for whatever may come up. Um, and every shadow work reading, you may only need one message out of it, right? So shadow work readings are always a little bit different to others because they can be a little bit more intense. So first feeling into that, paying attention to that, knowing what you need at this time. And also remembering that shadow work doesn't have to be hard all the time. It can be very gentle. It can be very soft. It can be just a point of self-reflection versus like ripping band-aids off and triggering all the time. And also understanding that we have golden shadows. And sometimes people forget that we have this beautiful capacity for these golden shadows and that these are something that we actually need to bring, bring to the surface to integrate into our field. So I might do a golden shadow work reading soon. I've, I've done some in the past. I haven't done one for a little while, but... Golden shadow readings to me are so beautiful because they open us up to the greatest aspects of ourselves that we have buried or suppressed. So keeping that in mind as well when you do shadow work, that not everything has to be hard and harsh. It can be gentle and soft and nurturing and also very illuminating for the things that we, that are the, our greatest assets, our greatest gifts. So our first card today though is your truth is powerful. So very, very beautiful cards here. We're just having sort of a gentle entry into this. Your truth is powerful. So with this first message I'm getting is, does your throat chakra feel blocked? Do you feel afraid to speak your truth? Why are you afraid to speak your truth? Where has it been conditioned in you or when were you conditioned to fear speaking your truth? That may be all you need to hear today. That may be the only thing you do today and then that's enough and it's just like, yep, that hits and I'm still afraid to speak my truth. I'm still afraid to open my mouth. I'm still afraid to, to say things a certain way. Maybe you need to do some throat chakra clearing work. Maybe there's some, some wounding from the past life. Maybe there's some fear of persecution energy that's coming through there. Maybe it is an inner child wounding where you were told to shh, right? Not be seen, not be heard not allowing yourself to speak your truth, having repressed emotions, feeling like you, you're not validated in your experience. So when and where was your truth blocked? And how are you still allowing that block to impact your life right now? So take that as it resonates, leave what doesn't. We are going to get some pairing messages for each of these, but it may just be that first card is all you need and that's it. Let's see what else we have. Next card is hmm, find your night self. Find your night self. And this, this feels very, um, oh, wow. It feels like such an interesting energy. It feels a little bit sorrowful. It feels a little bit, um, it also feels very poetic in this like melancholy, poetic sort of way. But find your night self, what I'm hearing with this. And it, it wants to come through as a poem and I wish I could like get the card, write the poem and then read it out, but I can't do that. I'm doing this reading live. So like we're channeling it, we, we're in the moment. But what I'm really feeling is this poetic kind of energy. It's such a weird feeling, but this poetic energy of in the stillness of the night, when the world is fast asleep, you can connect to, sink into the truth of who you are. When all of the world around you is still and quiet, can you have the capacity to find your true self? So one of the reasons I channel so much at night and I spend so much time doing that is because the world is asleep. It's quiet. It's still 
I don't have any distractions and I can really connect into what I need to see and I do most of my channeling in that way the, the work that I have to do for channeling work I do at night but this feels very poetic and it's like how many times have you wanted to sit up stay up late and just be in the presence of those like inner whispers and you deny that in some way maybe you're watching tv maybe you go to bed and you just go straight to sleep and you're not allowing yourself the space at night to sit in the stillness and I just keep hearing it as a poem, like washing through. I always see poetic sort of like prose, just like washing through my veins. That's how I've always felt it. Poetry is a big part of my life. But in that, I just see these words like moving through the veins. So it could also be that maybe you are wanting to be a poet, a writer, something like that as well. And it, there's so much distraction and noise during the days. If you can possibly sit down and write, what would happen if you gave yourself permission to do that poetic work at night? How would that change the way you could show up with it? But it just feels like this soft, poetic, gentle prose of allowing yourself to connect into the stillness that is the night self. When the world is fast asleep, you can hear your true self with so much more clarity. And not listening to the mind, but listening to your higher self, your intuitive self. Not letting the mind distort anything, but allowing yourself to listen to those really soft, subtle whispers that come through the stillness. That's how I'm feeling that card today. Really, really beautiful. It feels so gentle. But I feel for some, the message is that if you want to be a writer or a poet or something like that, then the best time for you to do that is to connect at night time. Let's get one more of these. Hmm. And the final one of these is the truth comes softly. And so we have the truth is powerful and the truth comes softly. So I love that that's kind of connecting in with that card there. It's its own message. But what I'm hearing with that, with the truth comes softly, is that just because it's your truth does not mean you have to proclaim it out to the world and have this thing of like, this is my truth and I'm going to like scream it from the rooftops. You can allow your truth to be still, to be soft, to be silent within you. Just because you know your truth does not mean you have to share it with everybody either. So that's where our discernment comes in of allowing your truth to arise within you and then knowing who and when and where to share it. And it's, it's allowing yourself that journey. And it's a very, also, it's a very interesting message as well that I'm getting here as, at the same time is that for many people, there will be a soft awakening to a new version of truth that's coming through. And something that I speak about a lot, and I say this all the time is, have you awakened from your awakening yet? Right, we go from the 3D matrix into the spiritual matrix. Most people get stuck in the spiritual matrix and we need to eventually get out of that into our spiritual truth. Right, The spiritual matrix is still where we are indoctrinated into new spiritual beliefs, but they're other people's belief systems. And most people don't get that, they don't understand that, or they don't like it when I say that. But have you awakened from your awakening yet? And most people are probably still in the, the first stages of their awakening journey, and that is okay. There is no rush to to get to this other side. But when you start to understand that, huh, I've moved from one version of indoctrination in the, th in the 3D matrix into the next version of indoctrination in the spiritual matrix, and I do use those phrases very loosely, into that and you get this indoctrination there and then you get stuck there and it's like, this is what I believe, this is what I'm working on, you know, and this is the, this is the energy that I'm sharing and the truth that I'm sharing and my truth is the truth. And you know, we say very gently that my truth is my truth, your truth is your truth. Are there some things that are fundamental, undeniable, universal truths? Yes. However, a lot of people aren't at that stage of seeing the level of discernment you need to see what is universal truth and then what is my truth versus your truth. And then when we have this, the truth comes softly, what I'm seeing with this and the way I'm hearing it is that for some people, you will start to see 
a shift in how you are responding to the spiritual community collective. And it's like, huh, maybe I was being indoctrinated. Maybe that belief system doesn't serve me anymore. Maybe that practice that I was doing isn't the be all and end all practice. Maybe there is a shift here that's taking place very, very gently, but a new level of truth is coming into my field that I can't not deny anymore. So I love this card of the truth comes softly because it's not always this big, grand, oh, this is like, this is the truth and this is what I'm speaking. And that's that your truth is powerful, it is, but know when to wield that power. But also knowing that your truth at times will change. You have to learn how to stand in your truth and own it and know that that is your sovereign right to own your truth, but then understand that your truth can also change. As you shift and change and evolve and you go through different seasons of your own journey, your truth will shift and change and evolve. So your truth is always powerful, but it is an evolutionary journey. So there could be something that is going to change for you in the coming season that feels like, holy shit. And I remember the day this happened to me when my entire reality was like obliterated and I had this new like version of Truthland, and I was like, what the actual fuck? Like, it, it rattled me so much, but it was so clear and I knew how deep that truth was. And I was like, whoa. And I still remember that moment. And that was the day that I, I had the first time that I ever said that phrase of have you awakened from the awakening yet? Because it was my version of that when I sat in that energy of going, you finally awakened from the awakening. And I was like, whoa. That's why I use that phrase, but I also know it's, it triggers people because until you feel that shift, it may not make sense. And that is okay. We are all on a journey. The journey does not have to look a certain way. The journey is also not a destination. We're just getting to our higher spiritual truth, whatever that looks like. Okay, let's get some pairing messages. What else do we need to see with our messages here? So... First one, your truth is powerful. And then we have love. L, I don't know why, but this is the song that's coming through. L is for the way you look at me. Oh, whatever. I can't remember the lyrics, but that song. Um, B is very, very extraordinary. I don't know. Anyway, that's a song that's coming through. Take it if you leave it. For those of you who like to hear the songs because I channel songs, um, that's just part of the way I channel, then by all means, have a look at it. I can't remember all the lyrics in that, but that's the song that's fully coming in. So your truth is powerful. And then we have this energy of love. So what I'm hearing with that is don't deny your love. Don't deny what you love, who you love, how you love. Don't deny the truth of your love. Don't allow the outside world to influence what you know in your soul to be your highest love. That's how I'm seeing that. Also understanding or feeling into that when with your truth is powerful, that love is the highest truth. So if you can speak from love, if you can act from love, if your truth comes from a place of love, it is always going to resonate and hit differently than if your truth is coming from a place of fear or perceived fear or perceived rejection or perceived wounding that could come up. Even though you know it's your truth, but you're speaking from a place of like, if I say this out loud, what are people going to think of me? That is coming from a place of fear. If you speak your truth from your heart, from a place of unconditional love, it will change the way it's received. But don't allow the external world to influence how, who, what you love. Don't allow the external world to influence the way love is felt within you, represented in your life. But maybe there's also a truth you need to see around love. Maybe you're blocking love, resisting love, rejecting love for a certain reason. Maybe there's a shadow around that as well. So 
Feel into that. Feel into what your truth around love is. Find your night self, this nature card. We've had this a couple of times recently, but this is the beautiful energy of, so as I've explained in a recent reading we did actually with this card, the three third eyes here, the closed pine cone is closed knowledge, open pine cone is open knowledge. We've got the pine cone starting to crack open, but our three eyes here, our three third eyes, right? Find your night self. As I said, our night time is when we are the most we have the most access to our intuition in a lot of ways because there is a stillness. So don't waste the opportunity to sit in the stillness at night and tune in to your highest intuition. Get out in nature, channel the moon. Get out in nature, channel the cosmos. Get out in nature, feel yourself connecting into that night energy and see how that changes your intuition. Interesting pairing with that one. Okay, let's have a look at this Truth Comes Softly card. What else do we need to see? And we have self-love. The truth comes softly. I love that. As I said, have you awakened from the awakening yet? And everybody's version of that will be different. But the one fundamental truth. And I say this knowing that it may challenge some people because there is no one truth, right? In so many people's mind. But I believe there is one fundamental truth in this world. And that one fundamental truth is love. And that if we all operated from a place of love over fear, it would change our entire world. So when we look at when we're awakening and we go into a higher level of awakening, whatever you want to connect to in that phrasing, like, there is no higher or lower, or above or below, or whatever it is, but that's just how it came out. Can you see how love will influence your truth? Can you see how the more deeply you love yourself, the more you can connect to your own self-nurturing, self-care, self-love, self-acceptance, all of those energies, the more you can connect to that, the quicker your truth will change. Because once you connect to love and you're not responding from fear, your shadows pretty much, they don't dissipate, but they no longer hold you hostage. If we continue in a pattern of fear, they keep us hostage. If we allow the energy to shift into a state of love, we're no longer a prisoner to that, that wound, to that shadow, to that part of self. We're also no longer a prisoner to the old version, to the old patterns, to the old truth, and we can see a new truth coming forward. You don't have to prove anything to anybody to be worthy. You just simply are. That you don't have to change who you are at a fundamental level. You might have to make some changes in your behavior, the way you respond, if you're highly triggered at the moment, but who you are at your soul, at your core, has always been, will always be enough. There is nothing to prove. There is no thing you need to earn here. The truth comes softly. When we're in self-love, we can see how much we've been punishing ourselves. We can see how much we've been hating on ourselves. We can see how much we've allowed other people's influence to impact our reality. When we can start having that level and depth of self-love, our whole reality starts to shift. And it's one of the hardest things we can possibly do. We can love others more easily than we can love ourselves, And which is why, to me, the greatest work we can ever do on ourselves is to learn how to love ourselves unconditionally. And that, to me, is a lifelong journey. There will always be ebbs and flows in that. But the more self-love you have, the more self-acceptance you have, the less validation we need from the external world, the less care we have about how people take and perceive our truth. It all interweaves, it all interconnects, right? Everything plays out this beautiful story. But if you can take anything from this today, because it does feel like a softer reading and I was got, going to take pull more cards, but I've been told no, we don't need more cards. If you can take anything from this today, the more you can focus on your own sense of love and learn how to express your truth from your heart space, the quicker your life will change the more easily your life will change. 
when we operate from the heart space, everything around us shifts because our heart resonance shifts everything around us. So maybe there's some inner work to do around self-love. Maybe there's some inner work to do around worthiness, right? Something that I have recently shifted is that nothing is earned. And that this again, it's a it's something that I've worked I've worked a lot on and when it finally landed, I was like, okay, here's here's the golden piece of it. Is that all of my life I felt like I had to earn it, earn something, earn whatever it was. You know, I was a reward focused thing. If I did all my jobs, I get the reward. If I do this, I get this result. Like I've earned through hard work or I've earned love through you know, changing who I am and I finally earned it. And one of the things that just dropped in as I was journaling recently, and it was like, I'm no longer in a season of earning, of having to earn anything. I'm simply in a season of receiving because I am no longer needing the external world to validate if I'm worthy or not. I am worthy because I am alive. I'm here. It is an innate part of who we are, but we've been conditioned to believe we're not worthy. And so once we start to reframe the narrative, reframe out the way we speak about ourselves and towards ourselves, we start to see that I don't need to earn someone's approval, right? I don't need to earn this thing over here. I don't need to earn a reward. If I want to have a reward, I just, I will have it. Kind of goes a little bit against what we do when it comes to business work. It's like you get your reward when you've like, done a certain amount but at some level at the same time I I actually think that that's probably the wrong way to look at it is that if we believe we have to earn something at a fundamental level we believe we are not worthy as we are to receive it and so if we can just reframe it that I am already worthy enough to receive but I may need to put some action in that's fine but it's not a trade-off of energy so That may not resonate yet for some because it took me a long time to get to that point of reflection. But where I'm sitting with that now is that I don't need to earn anything. I don't need to earn anybody's anything. I'm simply in a state of receiving because I already know that I'm worthy. I've worked on my version of worth. I've worked on my self-validation. I've worked on my self-acceptance. There's always things we can improve, but... When you get to a point of self-acceptance and self-love, everything around you begins to shift. So maybe that's the work you need to do. Maybe that's where you need to focus. Whatever it is in this reading today that you need to focus on, put your time there and see how it shifts. See how it starts starts to open you up to different energies. So as I said at the beginning, it felt like a more gentle shadow work reading. It definitely doesn't feel like we're ripping band-aids off today which is good. Sometimes we need just a little bit more of a tender, gentle approach. But can you also see the potency in that approach? Can you see the potency in everything that's come forward as well? So take what you need, leave whatever you don't. As always, not every reading is for everybody. So sending you all so much love. If you want to book a reading or anything else, everything is listed down in the description box below. For those of you who are wanting to join us for Somatic Shadows this weekend, we have a live somatic journey. Um, which it's all about somatization, which is buried trauma within the body, which we're going to be tapping into. We're doing a ceremony and then we have practice as well, ready to go on our course portal. So if you feel called to come and do a somatic shadow work journey, then by all means, feel free to connect in. I'll link that down below as well. But otherwise, sending you so much love, divine souls, and we'll connect again very soon.